I'll begin by thanking the organizers. This has been a brilliant meeting so far. I really had a very good time, still enjoying it. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about uh, bacterial type 4 secretion systems. So we use electron cryotomography to understand how different molecular machines work inside uh, cells without even purifying it. Uh, Sometimes there could be some molecular machines which are so big that you cannot purify them. So the way to look into them is by imaging them inside cells. So uh, why bacterial type 4 secretion system? Bacteria has uh, several different types of secretion systems. Uh, these include from type 1 to type 9 secretion systems. There are at least so far nine of them discovered. Uh, but uh, arguably type 4 secretion system is probably uh, the most complicated and the most elaborate. Uh, because uh, they do a lot of things. Um, they uh, transfer small molecules, they transfer toxins, um, they're responsible for many different disease conditions. So, uh, but they're so big that, you know, it's very difficult, so far it has been very difficult to study them uh, by purifying uh, an outside cell. So we want to use electron cryotomography to study these molecular machines. Uh, so uh, there are like, in terms of function, there are three different types of type four secretion systems. The bacterial conjugation system, we all probably know about it, that uh, bacteria utilize conjugation to transfer DNA between two cells, and then that gives them some sort of fitness, because if one bacteria has acquired some antibacterial resistant, it can just transfer to another bacteria. And this all happens by type 4 secretion system. So basically, bacterial conjugation happens via type 4 secretion system. There's another machine, uh, another system that is called the competence system. So bacteria can take DNA from outside uh, from the environment and then take it inside using this type 4 secretion system. It can also spit out DNA into the environment using the same molecular machine. And uh, there are a lot of different bacteria that could be intercellular bacteria, for example, Brucella, Bartonella, Legionella, or even extracellular bacteria that utilize type 4 secretion system uh, to inject a lot of different toxic uh, effector proteins into host cells, causing a lot of different disease. Uh, this is just a, a small list of uh, different disease that type 4 secretion system can cause. And I've highlighted two of them, which is one of them is uh, a stomach cancer or gastric cancer caused by Helicobacter pylori. And then another one um, is very important, and you will, you are hearing it uh, every now and then, is antibiotic resistance uh, in bacteria. So one of the primary reasons for antibiotic resistance in bacteria is uh, because of the type 4 secretion system. So uh, in terms of function, they are classified into three different types. Uh, in terms of genetic composition, a bacterial type 4 secretion system has been divided into two classes, type 4A secretion system and type 4B secretion system. So type 4A secretion system has about 12 components, and the prototype for this is uh, the agrobacterium type 4 secretion system, uh, which is used quite frequently in plant biotechnology. Uh, so uh, there are 12 components uh, compared to type 4B secretion system, which has 27 components. And you can see that you know, both of them are type 4 secretion system. Uh, they do similar things, but just in terms of genetic composition, they are very different. Uh, so both type 4A and type 4B secretion system, they have three different ATPases. So for example, the ATPases colored in, are colored in blue. Uh, similarly, for type 4B secretion system, also there are three different ATPases. The only real homology between the two systems is uh, this particular protein, which is called VRB10 in type 4A secretion system, and type 4B secretion system is, is called DOT-G. So there is only one protein that is conserved between the two systems. But other than that, uh, they do similar things, but they're quite different. So uh, for the type 4A secretion system, uh, what do we know? We know a little bit more than the type 4B secretion system. We know that the, uh, there is an outer membrane complex and there is a crystal structure for that. There are three proteins, VRB7, 9, and 10. Uh, these constitute this uh, outer membrane complex. We also know the structure of the core complex from cryo-EM, but uh, this is at pretty low resolution, about 2.3 uh, nanometer resolution. And the latest breakthrough came from Gabriel Waxman's lab uh, when they solved the structure of the type 4A secretion system. It has eight out of the 12 components. Uh, so here will be the outer membrane of bacteria. Here will be the inner membrane of bacteria. And this is one of the ATPases. So that's forming a hexamer. And then it forms two barrels. And this is one barrel, and this is another one barrel. There's a negative strain reconstruction of this barrel. Uh, but you can already start seeing that type 4 secretion system is much different than any other uh, type of secretion systems because 
uh, it has these two barrels at the uh, inner membrane, and there's no clear channel from the inner membrane all the way to the outer membrane. So how exactly it secretes all the effectors. So we know very little about that. And uh, this is, as I say, that it has eight out of the 12 components, and this is at much lower resolution. So we know very little about type 4 a secretion system. For type 4 b secretion system, however, the situation is worse. So what we know at best is that uh, uh, these are osmotically shocked Legionella cells. They have type 4 b secretion system. So when they imaged it during negative stain, they saw some, uh, you know, uh, some circles here, these big circles. And these are absent when they delete type 4 B secretion system. So that's what we know at most, that they form some sort of big complex on the uh, membrane of bacteria. But we do not have any sort of structure of, of any subcomplex or the full length complex. Um, but there has been many attempts to purify this uh, molecular machine from the cells. But so far, none have been successful because they are very complicated and there are too many components. So. Uh, so our aim was to get an in situ structure of the type 4A and type 4B, both type of secretion systems, and to know, because they have different number of genetic uh, compositions, whether they are structurally similar or not, and also we wanted to know uh, their assembly pathway and architecture. I'll probably not have time to go much detail into this, but uh, let's see how far we can go. So why ECT or why electron cryotomography? We well, already introduced uh, the advantage of having, uh, doing electron uh, cryotomography because we can already start seeing molecules or molecular complexes uh, inside cells. So you don't need to purify them. There's no need to do detergent isolation, which sometimes takes off. Sometimes uh, the complex falls off. There's no need to do any staining or any dehydration. So what we can do is basically we can uh, look at the complexes inside the cell in their near native state and in the right context. So what we do, we basically uh, take the grids and uh, we use something called a machine called Vitrobot. And in this Vitrobot, we'll basically add the cells straight onto the grid of, from the culture. So we do not do any sort of processing of the uh, cells so, so that we can look at the molecular complexes in situ and in their near native state. So after these are uh, blotted out, the excess liquid, it just frozen uh, in liquid uh, ethane or ethane propane mix. And then when we are looking at the cells in the complexes should be in their uh, right context and at the very uh, native state. So this is how a grid would look like. For example, these are the grid bars and these are the cells. So we will pick generally many such cells and collect something that is called a tail series. So here will be your grid. And this, we just stick that in, in the microscope, and then we tilt it at different angles, and then keep collecting projection images at different angles. So this is something which we call a tilt series acquisition. And once a tilt series is acquired, then we try to get all these uh, 2D projection images back into a 3D volume, which we call as tomogram. So this should be something like a tomogram. Uh, so uh, this is just another schematic of what I showed just now. So we generally tilt the sample from plus 60 to minus 60. Because of technical uh, difficulties or limitations, we cannot collect data here. So basically, we generally collect plus 60 to minus 60. And this is what the different projection images. And then we put them back together to generate this volume. But there is a catch here. So uh, as I say that we cannot collect data here. So if we start with a, uh, art so this is just artificial tomogram. Uh, artificial volume. So if we uh, say if we could collect data 85 degree plus minus instead of 65 degree or 60 degree, then uh, we'll still miss some information here because we are not collecting data in this part of the tomogram. So if we collect data set uh, 60 degree plus minus here or 45 degree, you will see that you know the less information we have when we have the 3D volume finally, then we are missing out some information here. So along one of the axes, we, some of the information is washed out because, of course, we are not collecting data from all different angles. Now, I'm saying this all, saying all this because uh, this, this missing wage problem would be important for the later part of my talk. So I just want you to remember that there's a problem called missing wage, which wash out some of the information from uh, one of the axes of the tomogram. So this is a, a tilt series. Uh, you know, we can already, of a bacteria, we can already see there is an outer membrane. This is the inner membrane. Uh, these are the gold fiducials. You can also start seeing some of the flagella. But uh, this is how generally a tilt series would look like. And this is just, I'm tilting at uh, plus minus 60. So we did the same thing for Legionella cells. Uh, and then um, I'm just showing a, a reconstructed 3D volume of a Legionella cell pole. 
So uh, this is the outer membrane of the bacteria. This is the inner membrane. The inside here is a plasm. So you can start seeing that there are some densities that goes all the way from inner membrane to the outer membrane. So for example, here, um, it's going back here again. So you can see that there are certain densities that are just extending from inner membrane to the outer membrane. And then we know that these cells expressing type 4 B secretion system. So that kind of, you know, gave us a hint that this could be uh, type 4 secretion systems. But then, okay, so we also looked at the, you know, surface of the tomograms. Uh, and we could see that there are some uh, top views of the tomograms, uh, top views of the particles, and which, are, which look like there are two concentric rings. So we deleted type 4 secretion system from Legionella cells, and we couldn't see any of these particles then. We collected several tomograms, so that, that again suggested that these are uh, type 4 B secretion system. So uh, when you look at fluorescent micrographs of, uh, of Legionella cells, then what we saw is that uh, there, there are type 4 B secretion system, they are localizing at the cell poles. So you can see two dots here. So most of the cells will have two dots because the, the type 4 B secretion system is mostly localizing at the cell poles. But sometimes we also saw that there is a fluorescent puncture at the middle. So suggesting that there is something also assembling at the middle. So if they're localizing at the poles, then why is it at the middle? So that became very clear when we looked at the uh, length of the cells. So when uh, they're smaller, then they're, they're they're localizing only at the cell poles, but as the cell length is growing, we see that there are uh, a green spot at the middle of the cell. And this is just a, uh, a, uh, another representation. So that just means that when, when the cells are going towards division, then type 4 secretion systems are already assembling at the mid cell. So we collected some tomograms of the mid cell uh, when septation has just began. And it, you can already see type 4 B secretion systems at the mid cell. So it just means that by the time the cell starts septation process, the secretion systems are already getting targeted to the future new pole or at the division plane. Uh, this is not just for type 4 secretion system. Now there are some other molecular machines uh, that also seems like they also go to the uh, mid cell during the septation process. So this is just a, one of the individual particles from our tomograms. And from individual particles already, we start seeing many uh, distinct features. So this is the outer membrane complex. This is the periplasmic complex. There's some densities here, uh, and then some densities here too. But uh, looking at individual particles, so basically, you know, already we start seeing uh, quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of uh, different information. Uh, but uh, we can uh, what we can already start appreciating that there's a complex on the outer membrane. There's a complex in the inner membrane, and uh, the shape is very much like a very familiar Wi-Fi symbol. So we call these as Wi-Fi particles. So uh, these are different particles. Uh, these are different sections of the tomogram uh, and uh, different slices of the tomogram. And then you can see these particles. So what we did is basically we collected many such tomograms and extracted many such particles and averaged them uh, to generate a, uh, something called subtomogram average. So in the subtomogram average, when we aligned the particles, uh, then uh, we saw clearly that the outer membrane aligned very well, outer membrane complex. But uh, we didn't see anything in the inner membrane part. So what we had to do is that we had to do focused alignment in the outer membrane and in the inner membrane separately, and then put them together back to make a composite model of the type 4B secretion system. Uh, for the type 4B secretion system, also uh, what we saw is that, you know, as I said, that uh, we had to align them separately. So we wanted to quantitate that if there is a flexibility within the complex. And it was clear that when we align the outer membrane part, and if we put all the outer membrane complexes aligned for one dot, then this is the distribution. All these green dots are distribution of the cytoplasmic complex. So it just means that the outer membrane and the inner membrane complexes are quite flexible. And this has been also proposed for type 4A secretion system by the Waxman lab. So this is, seems like a uh, you know, common to type 4B secretion system as well. So from the subtomogram average, we can already start seeing many of the features. For example, we can see densities here, which we call alpha and beta density. There's a density here, which we call hat density. And the outer membrane complex is attached to the periplasmic complex through this stru structure, which is called stem, which we call. And uh, then the wall of the outer membrane and periplasmic complex is attached to the inner membrane through this structure called stalk. And then we also see uh, there is some densities in the uh, cytoplasm, which we call rods. So the wall structure is about uh, 2 to 4 nanometers res resolution. Uh, this is estimated by the uh, by rest map. And the best result part of the complex is here, which is uh, probably the core part of the complex. 
And from previously biochemical experiments and fractionation studies, uh, these five proteins, F, G, H, C, and D, these five proteins were thought to be the core part of the complex. So uh, what we did, we deleted everything else and then reconstituted just these five proteins inside uh, regional cells. So basically, it is in situ uh, reconstitution. And did the same thing, collected tomograms, did the subtomogram average, and this actually assembled into a very robust complex. So uh, we can map this uh, core complex back into the uh, total structure, and we can see that this part of the complex is uh, the core part of the complex. And this is the difference map between the full complex and the core complex. So the core complex here is the black part, and the yellow part shows that uh, that's, that's the density uh, by the other proteins. So uh, if we just look at type 4A, previously solved structure, and type 4B secretion system structure, uh, this is an outer membrane complex. There is a periplasmic complex, same here. And this whole part is connected to the cytoplasmic complex by a stalk. It's true for here, too. And then there is these two barrels. If you take cross-section of barrels, that just means two uh, individual lines. So, so our interpretation was that these two lines is corresponding to one barrel. However, uh, the type 4B secretion system, although it looks quite, quite similar to type 4A secretion system, uh, if you look at the length and width, they, that is almost twice the size of a type 4A secretion system. So it's much, much bigger. Um, as I said, that for type 4 secretion system, we don't really see any sort of channel going from inner membrane all the way to the outer membrane. So it could mean that type 4 secretion system secretes by two steps. So things might transfer, get transferred for periplasm, and then they will be secreted to the uh, core complex. And there's some evidence uh, from genetic and biochemical studies. So we think that the structure is also supporting the same. So, uh, so I was talking mostly, so this part we resolved very well, but what about this part? This part, the densities are not aligning very well. We tried pretty hard, but we couldn't really get good alignment of densities in this part of the complex. Uh, but as I said, that the cytoplasmic complex or the, uh, this part of the complex is primarily density from these three ATPases. Uh, but when uh, Gabriel Waxman's lab solved the structure, uh, they identified these two barrels as one single ATPase. So then what's happening with the other two ATPases? There are, there are three different ATPases. So are they still present? Because when we're looking at them uh, in C2, then the, the other two ATPases should be also present there. So you wanted to really understand that part um, in more detail. And uh, so this part, when we're looking at these cells, these are grown outside in, in, uh, in broth culture. So we were thinking that maybe when, type, when the bacteria is engaged and it is in active state, then, then the inner membrane complex or the ATPase would organize more, uh, more properly. So we decided that uh, we looked through many different uh, type 4 secretion systems from many different bacteria. And uh, we were trying to image them in their active state. And I do not have time to go into details of everything that we tried, but uh, I'll just take you through something uh, that we learned from Helicobacter pylori. So Helicobacter pylori is uh, uh, extracellular bacteria which engage uh, with uh, epithelial cells and then use type 4 secretion system to inject CAG-A, which is an oncogenic protein. So uh, we basically uh, co-cultured uh, Helicobacter pylori cells with a host cell, and then image that uh, together. So these uh, host cells are grown on uh, uh, EM grids, and then we add Helicobacter pylori cells on them, and then they engage with the host cell uh, and, and interact. So uh, we uh, image many such uh, interactions and uh, got a subtomogram average of the pylori type 4 secretion system. Very interestingly, although we have much less number of particles in py helicobacter pylori type 4 secretion system, we still see this cup-like stru structure and that there are two more lines. So this is not just four lines, there is a cup-like structure here. So that suggested that there is something more interesting going on. Uh, rest of the part of the complex, uh, with, if you compare it to Legionella, it's quite similar. There is a hat, there is a periplasmic complex and then connects to the inner membrane complex with this stalk and then uh, the cytoplasmic complex. Uh, from the pylori complex, we had very nice top views, so we could get also the symmetry of the complex, which was 14-fold. Uh, we determined by uh, rotation and cross-correlation. And uh, previously, there is also a uh, from Tim Cover's lab, they purified the uh, core part of the type 4 secretion system from pylori. And uh, this is a, a class averages, top views and the side views. So what they suggested is that 
this is where through which the complex would uh, emanate a pillars or something and then secrete the uh, effector proteins. But we, what we realize is that that's probably not the right case. So the complex is more like oriented this way. This is the outer membrane. This is the inner membrane complex. And then this is consistent with the shape and the measurement of distances uh, in other type 4 secretion systems as well. And this is the pylori structure for reference. So probably this is the right orientation. Anyway, going back to the cytoplasmic part of the complex, uh, if we look at the cytoplasmic part of the complex here, then these are different. So a septum gum average is a 3D volume. So if you just look through different slices at the back, at the middle, and in the top, then these are different views of the complex. And here, this is an end-on view of the complex. So basically, you are looking from the cytoplasmic side, the, the complex at end-on view. So this is where the missing weight, uh, missing weight uh, problem that I mentioned at the very beginning comes handy. So when you are imaging complexes from uh, so 60 degree plus minus or 45 degree plus minus, I say that we'll miss out some information at the top and the bottom. And then when you're looking at the uh, complex from the, from the, from the end, end on view or from the cytoplasmic side, that's what I, exactly we're missing out. So we're missing out some density here and here. So it, probably uh, our interpretation of this data is that it's, it's not just half circles, but probably this is one circle, this is another circle, this is another, and this is another circle. So probably not just two barrels, there are more than two barrels there. And uh, because it is, these are uh, cellular tomograms, so you know, we are missing out a lot more because of the missing wedge. So what we did is basically uh, we generated many artificial uh, volumes and then applied 60-degree uh, missing wedge on them and then analyzed that. Uh, our, our idea was that you know, if this is what uh, the structure looks like in our, uh, in our subtom gum average, then can we replicate that using different volumes and different arrangements? So basically, we had uh, two barrels, three barrels, five barrels, and then multiple different uh, arrangements. After doing a lot of such analysis, what we found is that if it is a five-barrel system like this, then uh, it matches very well with the, uh, with the density that we are uh, observing in the cytoplasmic part. So if it is an organization like five barrel, and if you look at the central slice of that five barrel system, then this is how it looks. Uh, so there's a cup and then two lines, and then that's what exactly we are seeing. Similarly, if we go a little far, so if you look at here, the section, then you see four lines, and that's what we are seeing. So basically, this is very consistent with what we are seeing uh, in our septum gum average. And then if you look at the end on view of that, then this is how it should look with 60 degree missing wedge. And then uh, this is what we look at our, in our septum gum average. Of course, because this is uh, artificial tomogram and this is septum gum average from the cellular tomograms, so the missing wedge is more, uh, more you know, prominent. So with that, I'll just uh, summarize what I just said, that uh, we have revealed the first structure of the type 4 B secretion system, although at lower resolution, but at least we know what the architecture looks like. We can compare between the type 4 B secretion system and type 4 A secretion system, and it looks like they're architecturally quite similar. Uh, we also have revealed the uh, uh, structure, in situ structure of the Helicobacter pylori type 4 secretion system, and they look, that look quite similar to the Legionella system, and it has 14 fold symmetry. And uh, our interpretation is that the cytoplasmic complex is a uh, 3 ATPase 5 barrel uh, energy producing device. So, with that, uh, I'll just thank uh, Grant. He has been an extremely supportive mentor. Uh, our collaborator, Joseph Vogel, uh, the pylori work has been uh, in collaboration with Iwe Chang and Kerry Sheffer, and uh, this is our lab, and you know we have a great time generally uh, in the lab. Everybody is very friendly, so thank you for your attention.